What are you looking at there, Jim? Just just getting ready for the, for the day. Get a picture in my mind. You finding any good stuff on there? There's there's some pretty good ones on here. I think we can top them though. For under a thousand bucks? I I think. We I feel like these something. dudes spent a lot more than a thousand. Yeah. We're doing this on a budget, but I still think we can make it nice. Well, folks, welcome back to an episode of Fishing a Flare. Today, we are building the John boat in the video you just saw. We purchased everything. Now, today, we are actually going to build it. John's been researching ideas. I've been researching ideas. Um, and I think we've got a pretty good idea of what we're gonna build. But before we get started, I wanna say huge thanks to Co Speaker for sponsoring this video. If it was not for these guys, this boat build would not happen. I partnered with these guys to make this boat build happen. They're supporting the channel, and I really do appreciate it. If you guys wanna check out Co Speaker, use code FLARE, you actually get 65 percent off your speaker. I'll leave the link at the very top of the description. It's this thing right here. This is what it looks like. It's this little little speaker, dude, it's pretty loud. It's loud. It, 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 it's Bluetooth, outdoor, indoor use, as well as it fits in the cup holder of your truck. It's really nice. It's really small portable. We're going to be bumping some tunes as we're building this boat today. I'm pretty excited for it. I think the boat is going to turn out really well. But again, huge thanks to those guys for sponsoring this video. Click the link at the very top of the description. Go check it out. Make sure you use code FLARE. You get 65% off. I say let's try this out. These guys haven't seen Finn since you know what happened. You know, Finn, he's a boy. And when boys get to a certain age, sometimes you got to do things that, you know, I'm not super proud of doing, but it's something that you got to do. There's a lot of reasons why you have to do this. Most dogs do get neutered and he got neutered and he kind of looks kind of funny, but we're going to actually, let's, let's try this thing out and see if it works. Let's see. Sounds dogs love. It worked. Hey, buddy. Hey, show everybody your chicken leg. Hey, come here. I know you're embarrassed. Sit. Hey, you sit down. Look at it. You guys see his chicken leg? Poor guy. They had to put the IV right there. Feel bad for him, you know? He was just doing thin things, and next thing you know, it's just, uh, he's not the same. Did you enjoy that sound? Did that get you excited about life? He's been kind of down in the dumps after this. You know, he's been on meds, painkillers. He's been just really sad. So it's kind of nice to see him kind of perk up. That was the quickest I've seen him move yet. Since he's been back, yeah. he came ripping through here. He's just been moping around for the last couple days. Let's go check on the boat and see what we can do. There she is, baby. Mm-hmm. Get a good look. Get a good look at her, because everything is about to change. Today is the day we are building the John boat. A thou under $1,000, okay? I'm not going crazy. It's not going to be anything like the 10-pounder. The 10-pounder is like a legit bass boat. But this is going to be my pond hopping boat, so I don't want to go crazy with it and build like something crazy. So like, I mean, we're gonna put a deck on it, but then you can also put a back deck with some hatches and stuff. But every bit of plywood that you add, is just adding weight. And I didn't get a trailer for this and I'm not sure if I'm going to. Again, this is gonna be kind of like a, uh, just throw it in the back of the pickup, go just dump it into some farm pond that doesn't have a boat ramp and go bass fishing. And I'm gonna make this the most bass fishing effective John boat for under a thousand dollars. So that's, that's the basis of this video. This is not just like, turned this boat into the crazy most epic badass John boat bass boat conversion ever. That's not this video. I apologize. That video we filmed basically last year with the 10 pounder. That's the, the most badass John boat that, that that's pretty much ever been built. But this one is going to be a simple, simplified version. This is just for you guys at home. Maybe you're balling on a budget. You don't have a lot of time or, or money or she's nice. This is the budget version of a bass boat. But essentially that's what we got going on today. Uh, I've got John with me. He's going to help me build this thing. We've got basically, hopefully, probably not everything we need. And I'm going to try to do this the best way possible. But I'm sure a lot of you guys know better ways to do this than I do. We're just going to wing it. This is going to be the flare version, which normally is the not correct version. If you guys enjoy John boat builds, let me know. We'll build another one maybe this summer and do it different or whatever. Any, any type of videos like this, any DIY project, whether it's fishing or hunting related, maybe you want to see us build a duck blind or a bl duck blind on a boat, whatever you guys want to see, drop some comments down below. Let me know what you want to see. Let's just jump into it. All right, step one, we gotta measure this. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can take a cardboard cutout and do like a stencil and then lay it on there. But I, one, I don't have cardboard. Two, that just seems too easy. I feel like I gotta do it more of the flareish way, which is I'm just going to measure, just do a bunch of measurements and just kind of trace it and hope for the best. That's essentially what I'm doing. So I'm gonna measure from the back of the deck to the front, across, across, maybe every foot across. Try to trace it out there with a Sharpie because I don't have a pencil. And we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Now we're 
safety first. All right, the goal is not to break a blade and don't cut the power cord. Let's do this. This side went a lot smoother than the other one. The other one, huh, I'm not too confident on that I cut it correctly, but we're almost there. I gotta shave off that little bit and then cut this straight across and we're gonna, we're gonna dry fit it. It's definitely gonna take a little bit, you know, finessing a little bit. We should be all right. I think we, I think we got it dialed in here. All right, let's dry fit this thing. I'm sure it won't fit, but as long as it's close. It looks like a deck of a boat, kind of, a little bit. We, it's just rubbing on this side right here is all. So we're still, it still needs to come up. So I just need to trim, trim off this part and a little bit on the other side. Oh yeah, we're gonna be flipping and pitching for days, boys. Low key kind of impressed with myself. Didn't think I could do anything like this, but. All right, let's finish up trimming it and try to get it going here. Oh baby, like a glove. That's good. So the thing about trimming is as you trim and you push it forward, it, it's just, I don't know. The, the geometric shape of a boat is not the easiest, but we did it. I mean, we've got a couple back here, down here. I mean, there's a little bit of a gap, but it's not enough to really make a difference. We shaved it too close on that side, but we did pretty well. I mean, I think I think there's enough of a gap that might, that might get tight with the, uh, the carpet. We might just kind of have to stomp on this a lot and wedge it, I guess, but it should be, should be good enough. So we got the deck done. Now the question is, I think we need to paint this so that way it's sealed. The issue is it's all wet and dirty. I don't think you can paint a wet and dirty board. So we're trying to, next step is trying to build this hatch. We're gonna put a hatch here. And then what we've also decided is this. This was left over and I really wasn't planning on uh, using this piece of wood, but we can't buy another, we really can't buy anything else. Right now we're right at $1,000 for this. So normally you'd buy another piece of plywood that would fit this whole thing, but this will work. I'm just gonna have to cut that little notch out. But this is gonna be a back casting deck for whoever the co-angler is in the back. So we're gonna use this. It's not gonna look super, super pretty because there's gonna be a pet piece of this like bench seat like this, but it'll actually be a little bit more. But we're just gonna make it do. Basically, if you guys buy this boat and you buy one giant sheet, I think it's a four by eight sheet of plywood, you can do this. Um, otherwise, you can get a bigger piece. So right now we gotta figure out the hatch up here. Okay, so we're, these are only, let's just say 14 inches, say. So that would hold, basically, if you just wanna put some tackle, then you probably want it about, let's do that. So let's do 14 by 14. That way you can just drop. Okay, that'll work. But then what you wanna do is we're gonna have to go over a little bit on these. Three inches would be super safe. I'm just talking out loud here. Just trying to figure out how I wanna do this. But I think it should be 14, 14, and then lengthwise maybe make it another three, maybe. So we could do 17 by 14, so 17 by 14. We'll try 14 by 17. This is the drawing that I came up with. So reason why it looks like a box within a box, this inside perimeter box is gonna be the hole. This is gonna be a support right here. There's gonna be support on the back. There's gonna be support on the side. And then right about here, that's gonna be the bench. That's the bench. So that's gonna be a support there. So basically this hatch is gonna lift up, get supported on each side. But this is gonna be the hole. So I don't know it's gonna work. Fits like that, fits like that. Bingo, bingo. We we got it figured out here, I think. Well, looks like a hatch to me. That's a pretty big one. I think that can hold a lot of stuff. Hopefully we're able to make like a decent support out of this so we don't fall through it, but basically this thing's just gonna open up like this. Get whatever gadgets and gizmos you got in there. Should still give us enough room for the trolling motor. You can have the foot pedal up in front of it. Yeah, you can put all your tackle in there, life jackets, maybe a battery or two. Now, pretty much all these are wiped down. What I'm using here is, um, it's what Josie uses. He says, so this works. Basically, this is just protective enamel to seal this thing. When you cut into it and you know you put it on a boat, it gets wet. The carpet's obviously gonna soak up some water and you just don't want it to absorb the water because then it expands and then your deck isn't flat anymore and there's a bunch of problems. But if you paint the whole thing, 
it should hopefully seal it. Fingers crossed. This is what we used on the 10 pounder and it works. So we're gonna get this a painting, get the hatchet painting. We're gonna go get some food, go get some, we've, we're missing a few parts, little pieces that we need some more, more um, equipment stuff. We need more tools, we need more uh, materials and we're gonna grab some food and we'll come back. Hopefully it's dried by then, flip it over, paint it again and then time for some carpet. <music> Well, folks, we uh, we're here. Started day two. What do you think? You think it looked, you think it turned out all right? I think it's gonna do the job. I mean, it's not bad. Oh, it's dry. We're good. We put quite a few coats on on this. I don't know. This is what Josie told me. Is this what he used on the ten pounder? And to like, I think he put a bunch of coats on. We put like three coats on each side, and we're just gonna hope for the best. I mean, if it if it rots or it warps or whatever, it is what it is. This is supposed to be like a cheap John boat build. This is not like a have this boat for the next 10, 15 years and have it not have any issues. This is just a quick, for those of you guys at home that maybe have a John boat or a pond of fish and you wanna make a quick little, the cheapest basically deck that you can get, this is essentially what we're doing. So we sealed it all up, it's ready to rock and roll. But what I didn't show you guys is this. Well, this is gonna be hopefully a support beam and then these, two two by sixes little little chunks those are going to be for the trolling motor you want to you have to elevate the trolling motor you guys will see all this later today i'm just showing you we did do some stuff behind the scenes we did go to the store did buy a circular saw just made life a little bit easier all you missed was us going to the store buying some tools and they let the paint dry and now it's the next day and now i guess on the agenda today is we need to glue the carpet down staple the carpet down onto that and then attach the hatch with the hinges and do basically just make it come to life. That's essentially the plan today. You guys stay tuned. Glue done. I think I did a halfway decent job. Not really sure, but we're gonna flip this bad boy back over and see how it looks. I think we did decent. I don't think there's too much, uh, whatever you call it, slack. I'm just gonna walk, walk around this whole thing, press it down, and then we'll start cutting, and then basically flip it over, start stapling, and we should be, should be in business. clean it doesn't look bad at all we still need to cut out the middle obviously that looks really freaking good yeah we'll cut we'll get the hatch going you got to cut that out anyway it doesn't really matter if it doesn't fit well we're just scrapping this whole video <laughs> this looks really good so this is the front deck it's looking like it's pretty much done just got to cut cut the hatch out fold the carpet in and then we still have to carpet the hatch itself install the hinges install the trolling loader all that stuff but we're making some progress folks We've gotta put in a few supports. This isn't like the main support. This is just the support for the hatch. That's what we came up with. Well, I, I was gonna paint these and seal them and I was like, you know, that's just a lot of work. So we're not gonna do that. I ended up doing one. So essentially what you do is you put this right here and then you screw it. We were just gonna screw it from the top. You screw this down and then this gives a, something for the hatch to rest on. That way if you're standing on the hatch, it's supported. So you don't need a front one because we left all this room. And the reason why we left so much is so the hatch basically supported this way. And then we're going to put one, two, three here that when you step on the hatch, it's at least somewhat supported. And then we're going to put a beam right here to support this area. Cause that's like the weakest link. Pretty easy way to support your hatch. There's something that I thought of. This is again, the cheapest way you can do this. This is without doing any aluminum framing. Like if you had aluminum framing under this, you wouldn't need to do this. This is literally slap a piece of plywood, wrap it in some carpet and make sure it doesn't break. So uh, let's get the supports in. Oh, 
All right, look at that. That's that's pretty supportive. These line up like this, so you basically you could put the hatch in here, step on it, and it wouldn't fall down. Hello, the boat looks good. Bond's daddy showed up. Just just all of a sudden I hear a knock on the garage, and I was like, oh, who's that? Open the garage. It's Bond's daddy. He's here. It's looking pretty. Cheese and rice. I mean, it's not the prettiest. Again, this is just kind of like a hope for the best, but essentially that's your frame, your support frame. Let's try to put that thing in there and see what it looks like. Money! That's good enough. That's yeah. good enough for me. Well, that just took uh, about six hours. More like about two. Gotta get the hinge on. It's gonna be about like that. And then we gotta get the handle on and we're pretty much good to go. Then just install the trolling motor, which that, fingers crossed, shouldn't be too big of an issue. Voila, there's nothing to really step on. You need to get in, you just lift it up. Easy peasy on the squeezy, folks. Dang, I am shocked this worked. It's so hard to make a hatch when, like, I didn't even, my measurements were not precise. I mean, it's not, there's nothing square about this boat. It works. And that's the best part is you don't have to, like, you can just kind of slam it down and it shuts. You don't have to sit there and step on it or whatever. But then there's also no gaps where anything could, like, roll in, like, weights or anything like that. Like, the biggest gaps right there, which isn't big at all. <sighs> all right, well, I'm going to finish screwing this in and then get started on the trolling motor. So what we're gonna do is put this piece of wood, this is a two by six, and we measured it to the length of the bracket for your trolling motor, so it kind of depends on what you have. We're just gonna drill it in just like this at an angle. That way the trolling motor goes off and it's gonna land kind of in the middle of the boat. It doesn't really matter. If it's off to the side, it's not a huge deal. I just like it in the middle. So we're gonna drill a couple pilot holes. We'll probably do maybe one on each corner and then one in the middle. <laughs> Well, after two full days of work, I thought it was gonna take like two hours this morning and it's like 4 p.m. right now. We started at eight, so it's, uh, it's taking, a, taking a hot minute, but here is the final production version. Can you keep it down over there? It's not cleaned up, obviously we need to vacuum it. What we added and we didn't really show you is right under there is just a piece of wood. It's gonna be the support beam. Basically, we just took a block of wood and cut it and then just stuck it in there and just shoved it in there and angled it. That way I can rip it out anytime it's not screwed in. It gives support right here. This is the weakest link. So there's just a block of wood that's supporting there. So when you step on it, everything's together and uh, everything turned out well. I mean, it's this thing turned out, this, this took forever, but as you can see, we built the supports around it and obviously right here, we do have the trolling motor on now, which has this plug. So I'm gonna have to do some type of conversion rig where it goes from the battery and maybe have a plug in. This is what we use for the trolling motor. It's just two two by sixes. It's not treated. Also disclaimer, we did not go to the full length to like waterproof everything, seal it all, do everything the correct way. Like if you want this boat to last a decade or maybe even five years, you don't wanna do it exactly the way we're doing it. You wanna use, you know, screws that are treated, the wood. I've heard you're not supposed to use treated wood, but you're supposed to seal it using like paint that we did. So you wanna make sure you seal everything up before you do anything like we did. That's one thing we didn't do, we did not use or we didn't seal it. We sealed everything as much as we could, but we could have done a better job. There is a chance that this stuff is gonna warp and, and buckle and do everything else and, and maybe even rot out, who knows? But again, this is just kind of like a for fun on the farm type of boat that we're gonna be using. So this gives you guys the concept of building a boat, but you're gonna to wanna to use maybe better materials, more sealant, stuff like that, that will you know keep it from rotting. The other part that we didn't show you is this. So all this is, is a piece of wood, an extra piece of wood that we had. And we just threw some carbon on. We didn't even glue it, we didn't do anything. It just slides right out. And you can see it's just wide open back here. So you can walk all over it. It's not gonna break. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, you guys can see it's, I mean, it looks like a bass boat. I think it'd be good, but again, this is gonna be just, you know, for pond hopping, farms, stuff like that. That's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comment section down below. Remember, you need to name this thing. I'll give away a, I'll give away 25 packs of Guggen baits to the person that I choose to name this. So we've got the Tin Pounder, the Squeaker Seeker, the Warthog, the Flare B&B, the Ducks Diner, the Brute Bakery. Those are so far the things that you guys have named. Um, those are lakes, those are trailers, campers, and boats. The boats, we have the Squeaker Seeker and the Tin Pounder. So we need a name for this guy. If I pick your name, I'll give you 25 packs of Guggen baits. That's pretty much it. But if you, guys, if you guys enjoyed the building video, let me know. I'll do more. I'll go buy another boat, maybe a bigger one, maybe a smaller one, maybe make it more complex, make it more simple. You guys let me know what you guys want to see in the comment section down below. Really do appreciate the view. 
Peace.